Hey there, crochet creators, and welcome to Forest Feather Fashion. I'm Candice, and today I'm going to be showing you three different ways to connect your granny squares using your crochet hook. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more crochet creations. For now, let's get on to the tutorial. It's time to join these granny squares. If you like the look of them, I have a classic granny square tutorial. I will put the link in the description box below. For this video, I will be using a bright yellow yarn so that you can clearly see the difference between these three stitches. The single crochet method. First, we'll need to create a slip knot on our crochet hook. Grab your two granny squares, wrong sides facing each other. We will be making a single crochet in the corner chain space. So pull up the yarn, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. This will be your first single crochet. Now we will be making single crochets in the back loops only. This is the loop that is closest to the back side of the granny squares. They will be the two loops that are closest to each other. So we'll insert the hook through the back loop of both granny squares and create a single crochet. Continue making single crochets down the side of the granny squares and when you get to the end you will make a single crochet in that corner chain space. And this is what a single crochet on top looks like. Now it's time to grab your next two granny squares, wrong sides facing each other. Decide how you would like to position them. And we will make a single crochet straight into the chain corner spaces. Grab the yarn, you'll have two loops on your hook, pull through both loops. Continue working in the back loops until we get to the next chain corner space. Make a single crochet in the chain corner space. I'm going to be cutting my yarn and tying this project off as I will only be joining four granny squares. You will continue this along the entire length of your larger project. Now it's time to work on the other side. Make a slip knot a single crochet in your chain corner space. Again, we will only be working in the back loops, the loops that are closest to each other in your granny square sandwich. Continue this along the side and I will meet you at the intersection. Once you've made a single crochet in the chain space, we are going to chain one. This will lie over the top of the ridge and prevent the project from bunching up. Make a single crochet in the chain space and Continue making single crochets in the back loops only.
Don't forget to make a single crochet in the chain space. And this is what the single crochet method looks like. Makes a beautiful ridge on the front. This is what it looks like on the back. Onto the slip stitch on front method. This is my favorite way to connect granny squares. First, we'll make a slip knot and remove it from your hook. This method can be a little challenging in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it is rather fun. We are going to insert our hook into the back loop of the corner chain on both granny squares. Now place your slip knot onto your hook and pull through both loops. Make sure that your working yarn is behind your two granny squares. So insert the hook into the back loop, of both granny squares yarn over and pull through all three loops. The most important thing to remember about this stitch is that your working yarn will be behind your granny squares. It is a lot easier to have your granny squares on a flat surface when making the slip stitch on front. Your hook will just weave through the sides when you start getting a hang of this stitch. Once you do your last slip stitch in the end, grab your next two granny squares, right sides facing up. Make sure that your working yarn is behind the two granny squares. And then insert your hook into the back loop of the corner chains. yarn over and pull through all three loops. Continue this pattern until you reach the end. To connect your granny squares along the other edge, make a slip knot, take it off your hook, and continue this until we get to the join. Make sure that your working yarn is behind the two granny squares that you are connecting, but above the previously stitched side. Once you've made a slip knot in the back loops of the last two chain spaces, we will chain one and again insert your hook into the back loops of the corner chains. Grab your yarn and pull through all three loops. Continue this all the way to the end. The slip stitch on the front method makes a beautiful flat braid between the granny squares. This is what it looks like on the back. And now onto slip stitch on the back method. This makes a fairly invisible seam between your granny squares. First thing, make a slip knot and leave it next to your work. Now we will be placing the granny squares right sides on top of each other. 
we will be inserting our crochet hook into the back loops of both granny squares. This will mean they will be the stitches furthest apart from each other. Put your slip knot back on your hook and pull through both loops. Because your wrong sides are facing outward, it will be the stitches that are closest to the back of the granny squares and therefore furthest away from each other. You will continue inserting your hook into the back loops only and making a slip knot. This stitch is by far the easiest of the stitches and it makes a fairly invisible seam. But if you would like a project with a little bit more detail on the front, then the single crochet or the slip stitch on front method would be the way to go. Continue slip stitching along the side. Now we're ready to add our next two granny squares. Make sure that the right sides are facing each other. Insert your hook into the back stitch of the corners. Yarn over and slip stitch to connect your granny squares. To connect the other side, make a slip knot, remove it from your hook, and continue slip stitching along the edge, and I will meet you at the intersection. When you get to the intersection, don't forget, we are going to chain one. This will lie over the ridge and it will prevent the project from bunching up. Continue this all along the edge and I'll meet you at the end. And this is what the slip stitch on back method looks like. If you use the same color yarn, you would barely even see it. So there you have it. Three different methods on connecting your granny squares. If you like the way that it looks at the back, you can always do this on the front. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. And you can follow me on Instagram at Forest Feather Fashion. Feel free to tag me in any of your projects. I would love to see them. Until next time, happy creating!